Have you ever seen a YouTuber demonstrate a saturation plugin and as they switch it off and on, you can't hear any difference? You are not alone. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. It doesn't really help that people like me use vague terms like warmth, color, and character when we're talking about saturation. And if you can't actually hear it, you may understandably come to the conclusion it may all be a hoax, or at best, much ado about nothing. Well, I'm gonna guarantee two things to you by the end of this video. Firstly, I'm gonna describe exactly what saturation is without using any vague terms at all. And secondly, you are gonna hear the effects of subtle saturation by the end of this video, perhaps for the first time. Now, before we get into that, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this video, DistroKid. Follow the link in the description down below and you'll get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Now, let's answer the question, what is saturation? <laughs> let's use an analogy. Here I have a Creative Source t-shirt and here I have a bottle of water. Now if I squirt this water onto the t-shirt a couple of times, we would say it's wet, yeah, but it, it's not absolutely sort of full of water. It hasn't reached its capacity to hold on to water. Now, if on the other hand, I take this t-shirt and I dunk it in this bottle of water off screen here and lift it up, you can see that it's completely dripping now. It's exceeded its capacity to hold on to water. It is saturated and that's how i want you to remember what this word means now in audio equipment when particular components reach or exceed their intended capabilities we would say they are saturated now typically this will occur with things like magnetic tape or tubes or valves depending on where you're from and transformers now when saturation occurs in these components there are two main byproducts the first is soft knee compression and the second is harmonic enhancement let's talk about soft knee compression i'm going to be using two free plugins to conduct an experiment. The first of these is a tone generator, which I'll be using to generate a sine wave, a really simple sound. The second plugin I'll be using is M Compressor from Melda Productions, and I'll put links for these in the description down below in case you want to play along. Now, the good news for you is we don't actually need to be able to hear the sound of the sine wave to conduct this experiment. And that really is good news because they get pretty irritating after a while. So what I'm gonna do first of all is gradually increase the volume of the sine wave. And although we can't hear it, we can see with the metering on the right hand side that we have both an input and an output level. And note that they currently match each other, okay? As I turn the input down, the output goes down by the same amount and vice versa. As I turn it up, it increases by the same amount. This is what we would call a linear response. Now that's happening at the moment because I haven't changed any of the, uh, any of the other settings on this compressor. So let's turn our sine wave down. And I'm gonna start off by adjusting the threshold on the compressor. I'll pull it down fairly low here, and you can see the point at which this is happening. I've already set a ratio of two to one, okay? Which is why we say, see this change in this line here, okay? So below the threshold, nothing will be happening. Above it, um, we will see some compression happening at a two to one ratio. Let's just see that in action as I push the volume of the sine wave up look at the metering on the right hand side currently they match and then as I approach and then cross the threshold you will see they no longer match the in the input is increasing and so is the output but not by the same amount anymore okay so that is basic compression now because of that sudden change around the threshold we call this hard knee compression I guess this is because this is like the shape of a knee yeah okay so let's Let's change it to soft knee compression so I'll click on soft at the top here I'm just going to gradually increase the knee size and look at what happens around about the area of that threshold we can see that line is softening there's there's a curve there now and now as we push the volume of this sine wave up at lower volumes, we can see that the input and the output do match. But as we approach the threshold, we start to see a slight change between the two, okay? Then we'll go over the threshold and that change or the difference will gradually increase until we reach that full two to one ratio setting that we have at the moment, okay? So 
I think you can appreciate, even by looking at this, if you were listening to this, it would be much more difficult to detect the point at which the compression kicks in because of that soft knee, because it's gradual, okay? And that's probably the reason why it's difficult for us to hear um, when that soft knee compression is happening as a result of saturation. Now, I want to make really clear here, I've not used saturation at the moment for this compression, okay? We've just used this compression plugin to demonstrate what a soft knee compressor is. But what I want to be clear about is compression doesn't just happen as a result of saturation with compression hardware or compression plugins. It can happen with all kinds of different hardware and plugins as a result of saturation. So that's the first byproduct of saturation. Let's move on to the second byproduct, which is really exciting in my opinion, and that is harmonic enhancement. Here we have our sine wave again, but this time it's represented in a spectrum analyzer. And as we can see, it's a really simple sound, and that's useful because as we add saturation to this, it's gonna be easy for us to see what's being added. Now you still can't hear it at the moment because it's still muted. If I were to unmute it, it's still possible that you wouldn't be able to hear it depending on what speakers you're listening on. Perhaps on a phone speaker, for example, it would be difficult to hear. And that's because I've said it at 100 hertz, a fairly low tone. The only reason I've said it at 100 hertz is for some easy math later on okay so we've got our sine wave here now let's add some saturation i'm going to be using this plugin this is from ik multimedia and it's the t-rax white 2a modeled on a really famous compressor the la2a it's bypassed at the moment so let's go back to our analyzer and we're looking at our sine wave now let's switch on that compressor and as you can see, some sound has been added to this very simple tone. And in fact, what's been added is harmonics, okay? We can see them all here. Now, these are sometimes also referred to as overtones. Normally, we would refer to our original sound there, the sine wave in this case, as the first harmonic or we often call it the fundamental, okay? This is the kind of root of our sound. And then we have harmonics, in this case, added at 200 hertz, 300 hertz, yeah? Then we have one at 500 hertz, then one at 700, then one at 900, okay? Notice how they're kind of nice, neat multiples of our original 100 hertz hertz now also notice their distribution some of them are louder than others in this case the 200 hertz harmonic is the loudest and they sort of gradually decrease okay as they're added um, along the frequency spectrum now that is the harmonics added by this particular plugin. Let's try another one. We'll bypass this one. Um, this time I'm going to use this plugin. This is the T Rex Black 76 based upon the very famous 1176 compressor. So again, it's bypass. We'll go back to our simple sine wave and we'll switch this compressor on. Again, you can see that harmonics have been added, but their distribution is quite different. We have one at 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz, etc. But you'll notice in this case, whereas before the 200 hertz harmonic was the loudest one, in this case, it's the 300 hertz harmonic, which is the loudest one, okay? And it just has a very different distribution. Now, if you were listening to this, which I promise we are going to listen to some of this a little bit later on, you would notice that they have had a different sound, a different character. That's where this word character comes in, okay? And that's because we've added uh, harmonics, maybe the same harmonics, but certainly at different levels, okay? Now, before we do get to listening to this, I need to talk a little bit more about the nature of these harmonics. <laughs> there are basically two types of harmonics, odd and even. If we take our original sine wave, conveniently set to 100 hertz, and we create harmonics by using multiples of two, four, six, or eight, eight, then the results would be even harmonics because the numbers we used to multiply were all even numbers. Whereas if we used 
three, five, seven, and nine to multiply the original tone, then the results would be what we would call odd harmonics. Now, the interesting thing is we perceive these two different types of harmonics in really different ways. With even harmonics, we tend to perceive them as more subtle, more round, even more musical, whereas with odd harmonics, we perceive them as a bit more gritty and aggressive. Now, as we saw earlier with different hardware or different plugins, there will be both of those types of harmonics in there, but there will be a different distribution. And that will be the difference in the way we perceive the character of the equipment. So I think it's worth noting that although we look at three prime sources of saturation, those being tape, tube and transformers, in a real piece of hardware there may be multiple components which are adding to the character of that saturation. And in fact, odd and even harmonics will exist in all of those types of hardware. Of course, the distribution is what really affects what we would call the character. And for example, if there are a lot of low lower harmonics being added uh, with saturation, we may feel that it's added a little bit more warmth because we tend to associate lower frequencies with warmth. So interesting to note that I think you still need to use your ears to get the result you want, but you can make some sort of generalizations. So as we can see, we can use saturation to change the character of a sound, but we can also use it to make something a little bit more prominent in our mix. And that's because it is introducing compression, which helps us to push a sound a little bit more forward in a mix. And also it's adding that new frequency information, which may help to expose that instrument within our mix. We can also use saturation during the mastering process where it's really, really valuable in fact, and can make that difference before you finally release your music. And of course, if you do want to release your music, I highly suggest you use DistroKid. They make it super simple. You just upload your WAV file and your artwork fill in a simple form and they do the rest. They get it out to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, what have you. And it's really a breeze to release your music to the world in this way. So why is it that you've been struggling to hear saturation sometimes? Well, I think there's three main reasons. First of all, that soft knee compression we were talking about is by nature sometimes quite difficult to hear because it's gentle, okay? And that's why you may not have picked up on it. Secondly, it may be that you're not driving your hardware or your plugins with enough gain. Remember, we have to push some of those components to their limits before saturation occurs. Thirdly, the original sounds that we're listening to are actually complex even before we use saturation. Let's take one note on a guitar, for example. You just pluck that one note. There's a fundamental there, but there's also some harmonics in that note. That's actually what gives a guitar its character, the nature of those harmonics, okay? Now, we don't normally just play one note on a guitar. Often we'll be playing, for example, a chord. We've got a whole bunch of fundamental there and a whole bunch of harmonics associated with them. When we now add saturation, we're often just enhancing already existing harmonics. And that's why it's actually a little bit difficult to hear sometimes. Now, I don't want you to be despondent. I'd like you to think of it by this analogy. Imagine the accent of the people where you normally live or a place where you've lived for a long time okay now imagine that along comes a hollywood actor and they do an impersonation of that accent okay now for many people around the world they may think oh that's great they did a great accent but for you you may think hang on it's not quite right and that's because you've spent years and years listening to that accent and you're very tuned in to the nuances of the sound of that accent I think that developing your ear in audio production is a little bit like that. It takes experience, it takes exposure to different sounds before you really start to hear sound in a lot more detail. So please stick with it. Now, let's hear some of the effects of saturation. 
So I've got my headphones on and I hope you will do the same. Either use headphones or studio monitors because we're going to be listening to some harmonics which are being added by saturation and you may not pick up these differences if you're listening through a phone speaker. Now we're going to start off with a sine wave again as you can see here this time at 200 hertz and I will be switching the plug-in on and off and you can see at the moment the harmonics which are being added but now let's have a listen to them. Now don't worry at the moment as we switch between the plug-in being on and off if you can't hear the difference. We'll get to that in a moment but you may be able to hear the difference. Let's have a listen. So I would describe that as fairly subtle, okay? We've got some sort of lower harmonics being added there at a fairly uh, low volume, if you like. So if you couldn't hear the difference, that's fine. If you could, let me know in the comments down below. But this time, let's isolate the harmonics, okay? So with this EQ, I have this low cut filter. It's set very high at the moment. I'm gradually going to move it down so that you can hear just the harmonics, okay? I'm not gonna let you hear the fundamental. So let's do that now. So congratulations, I'm sure you could all hear that and perhaps for the first time you are hearing the harmonics which have been added by a saturation. Now let's gradually blend in that fundamental, okay? Have a listen again. That's the harmonics. Hopefully you can still hear the harmonics but now you can hear a bit of the fundamental. finally the sound there was starting to be dominated by the fundamental so oftentimes the reason you can't sort of easily detect them is because um, the fundamental is so much louder in comparison to the harmonics that they are there just fairly subtly but that is what is being added by the saturation in this case so i hope that that has helped to demystify saturation for you and you'll have a much better chance of identifying it in the future i recommend start making use of it in some extreme ways and in some subtle ways as well. When you are using it subtly, do remember that I believe it can take some time for your ears to kind of tune into these things. So don't be worried if you don't really hear it right away. Now, one of the other mysteries in audio production is compression. If you're finding that difficult to understand, then I recommend you watch this really old video of mine right here. Thank you.